Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a first impression foundation test. So this is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation, which I actually bought a long time ago and I still haven't worn it yet. I don't know why, but I've been wanting to wear it and I thought I would just test it out on camera and see how I vibed with it. I have a feeling I'm really gonna like it. This is a pretty popular foundation. I know a lot of people love this product. This retails for $5.99 depending on where you get it. It's somewhere in that range, so it's very affordable. So this foundation is supposed to not have any flashback whatsoever. That's supposed to be the main thing about it is that it doesn't have flashback. So it comes in a one ounce size bottle and this is the shade Golden Beige, which I'm pretty sure is me. It's medium warm. So I'm gonna be testing this out with a beauty blender and a flat top kabuki brush. So there are 20 different shades of this foundation and it retails for $5.99 on the Wet n Wild website and they have it at different stores like Ulta and different drugstores wherever they carry Wet n Wild. It comes in a glass bottle and it has one of these things. You know, I swear I always have to double check to see if it actually has a pump on it because more often than not I just... Oh. No. Pretty sure that's not what we're supposed to use. You can apply this either directly onto your face, but I don't like to do that just because it goes back in here. So I'm gonna put some on my tray. What I remember when I first talked about this foundation that people did not like about it was the smell. And I could smell it already. It smells like MAC Studio Fix Fluid, which kind of smells like paint. It's a very strong scent, but from what I've heard is that the scent goes on strong and then it disappears. Either it disappears or you get used to it, one of the two. All right, so I'm gonna start on one side of my face. Obviously I have eye makeup on. I didn't finish my lower lash line because I typically do that after I do my foundation. Oh, I also have the Wet n Wild. This is their Photo Focus Concealer. This is in the shade Light Medium Beige, which I was gonna try out. We'll see, it might be a little bit too dark for me. I can just test it out as like spot concealer. It definitely has like pretty good coverage. We'll see, I don't know. I feel like I can kind of see it on my face right now. It might be a little bit too dark to do highlighting with, but I'll test it out in a smaller area so that way we can see. All right, so on the right side of my face, I'm gonna use my damp beauty blender. Beauty Blender will forever be my favorite way to apply foundation. The scent is definitely very strong. I can smell it. But the color looks really, really good. This one looks like it's pulling not orange, which I like. And the coverage, the coverage is actually pretty good. I would say it covers more than the Armani Luminous Silk, which is what I've been wearing a lot lately. It's definitely got more of a matte finish or more of a natural finish than the Armani Luminous Silk. It might even have a little bit more coverage than L'Oreal Pro Glow, but it's definitely not, it's not like a heavy coverage. All right, I'm going back in and just adding a little bit more on areas that I want a little bit more coverage, which is usually just my cheeks. So let me go. I feel like it has a nice finish on the skin. It looks very natural. I enjoy pouncing with it. Now I'm gonna do the other side with a brush. I'm gonna try the Flat Top Kabuki brush. This is a Sigma F80. I'm just gonna apply it on that side just to see if it applies better. I mean, I think it went on really well with a Beauty Blender. Typically I only do brush application if I feel like the Beauty Blender does not do a good job with the foundation, which is pretty rare. I'm trying to think of what, what foundation. There is a foundation that didn't look good with the Beauty Blender, which is I think it's the L'Oreal Infallible Total Cover Foundation, but I didn't like that one either way. The smell. Oh, I cover so much more surface area at a time when I use a brush. Dang, it's been a while. I think I like the Beauty Blender because it just feels like, I don't know. I feel like it gives me the feeling of more hydration on my face, but I feel like maybe it gives a little bit fuller coverage, perhaps, with a brush. There wasn't like a huge difference between the two, but let me just come over here. Kind of stipple it in. Here's a super close up, real close of the foundation. I think it looks really good. The color is legit. It looks good around the nose area. When I try new foundations, I always notice it like right around the nose if, so, if it does something weird, but this one looks really good. All right, so when I'm looking at it in the mirror, I feel it feels a lot more matte than what I'm used to just because I've been wearing Pro Glow and Luminous Silk for so long that it feels more matte on my face, but it still does have a little bit of a sheen to it. 
It's definitely not like a full coverage matte foundation, which I like about that. Um, I feel like just in this area, it seems a little bit dry, but around this area and the finer lines over here, it seems to be doing pretty well. It looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to concealer. And I have a strong feeling this is too dark for me. Let me just do a little test spot. I think that's too dark. Damn. Yeah. That's gonna be too dark for me to use under my eyes. Unfortunately, I'm gonna grab my handy dandy shape tape, my usual go to. And this is a Smashbox Blurring Concealer Brush. I like to use this one to get into like the smaller areas, especially if I already have my eye makeup on. You don't want to be like covering it up with hella concealer, you know? And just buff out this concealer. See how it reacts with the shape tape? Because that's very important. <laughs> what would happen if you didn't spray? Well, it was just like a little bit dry, my beauty blender. Well, what would happen? It wouldn't really buff it out as good if it was dry. Would it peel it off? Uh, I don't think so. I just don't think it would be a lot harder. It's kind of like using a dry sponge, you know? All right, nothing's weird happening with the shape tape and the foundation, which is good. I feel like the only time I've ever had like a really weird interaction with concealer and foundation is with the Pro Glow. If you put concealer on top of that, it tends to like lift. All right, so I'm gonna take some setting powder and just dust it on my under eyes, set the under eyes. All right, so now to highlight, I'm gonna use a Wet n Wild highlighter. I love their Mega Glow highlighting powders. I think the one that I use is something Canopy. Can't remember the exact name, but I do really like the uh, Mega Glow highlighters. This is one of their newer shades called Golden Flower Crown. This is right up my alley with highlight colors. And I'm gonna use a fan brush to apply it. And they came out some newer shades too, if you like like pinky or they had like a lavender one not too long ago and then for blush i'm trying to use like as many wet n wild things i can find because i do like wet n wild stuff this is the wet n wild apricot in the middle blush color icon blush love this shade this is like one of my all-time favorite blush colors just finish up my makeup here do a little nose contour i go back in with the highlighter I feel like my face feels a lot more matte than what I'm used to. Just when I look in the mirror, it looks so much less dewy. It's just not what I've been used to lately. So what I'm gonna do is take my Real Techniques contouring brush and I'm gonna go in with the highlighter and just kind of press some of the highlighter onto the cheeks just to give me like a little bit more of a glow. And up here. All right, so now I wanna bronze up and I don't have a Wet n Wild bronzer, so I grabbed a Makeup Geek bronzer. I haven't tried this one yet either. I haven't been wearing a lot of bronzer lately, surprisingly. This is Makeup Geek in the shade Tawny, which looks really pretty. And this is a medium skin bronzer. And I have an Eco Tools brush. This is a Define brush. I'm just gonna use this with a very light hand because I don't really wanna define with this, but I'm just gonna, you know. Lightly defined. This color looks pretty good for this bronzer. Maybe I will bring it into this cheekbone one time. Give it a try. Do a little contour. Mm -hmm. Does it look really strong? It doesn't? Yeah. It's kind of strong. It's kind of strong. <laughs> I'm barely tapping it into the pan and then I'm doing this on my hand to like take some of the product off You know what I think it is? I think it's because I haven't contoured my cheekbones in a long time that any Whenever I put something there, I'm like <sighs> I'm not ready. Okay. Stop putting it on your forehead Put the brush down. Let me finish up my eye makeup here. I uh, what did I wear today? I'm wearing the baked browns palette from dose of colors I'm actually just wearing this color and the dark brown and then on my lid, I'm wearing the Dose of Colors from the Mint Collection. This is Magic Moment, Ideal Duo. I just really lightly applied it. I didn't like heavily pack it on. All right, now I'm gonna put on my mascara on my lower lashes. This is Shayla's Baddest Black Big Shot Mascara. All right, now I'm gonna finish the look off with 
a lipstick. One of my favorite lip colors. I'm just sharpening one of my lip liners right now. This is MAC Lip Liner in Subculture. This is the one that I'm pretty sure it's the same color as my lips, so I swear it doesn't actually do anything, but I still use it anyway. And then the lip color I'm gonna be using is from Maybelline. It's one of their Superstay Matte Ink lip colors in the shade Loyalist. It's just, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just a really good nude. This, I swear, makes it look a lot more like pinky. It's darker than this. Let's give a zoom, zoom on the foundation. It looks really good. I'm very impressed. Very impressed. It's definitely more matte. I don't think this is actually a matte foundation. I think it's just compared to what I'm used to, but it looks really good. I'm feeling it. I think this is a good one for me. I'm gonna have to give it a, basically an A right now. So you're going on a trip. This is going in your suitcase. If I'm going on a trip, this would go in my suitcase. She likes it. Although, will it be the only foundation? slow down. This is definitely like a strong medium coverage. I think you could build it up if you wanted fuller coverage, but I think it's definitely got some good coverage. I'm going to try it out a few more times, but so far just the application and the rest of my makeup, how everything looks, I really like this product a lot. I'm kind of kicking myself for not trying it for so long basically, because I think this is a really good product and the price point, you can't really beat that. That's a really good price point. So what and wild you did that. Killed it. So that is my first impression on the Wet n Wild foundation. I'm gonna have to give it a big thumbs up. I like it. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. If you like this foundation, if you already wear it, or if you don't like it, hit me up down below. Let me know your thoughts. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Okay. No, what are you doing? Rolling. Still rolling. Still rolling.